Market downturns are when to look for a possible five-year strategy, a no-cap strategy, or maybe using a multiplier. In this educational episode, I'm going to address what should you do with your IUL insurance policy when the market dives. Get ready. Uh, I'm going to share insights with you that maybe you have never had before. So I'm Doug Andrew. I've been a financial strategist and retirement planning specialist now for north of 48 years. And if you've watched very many of my educational episodes on this three-dimensional wealth channel, you'll probably uh, understand that one of my favorite financial vehicles as a retirement planning specialist is a max-funded indexed universal life insurance contract structured correctly and funded properly. When you do that, it can perform far superior to most uh, IRAs of 401ks invested in the market. You will learn that this is where I've earned average returns over 20-year periods of 9.62%, some years 11.17%, even 25 and 61%, and even 158% returns using multipliers. Now, those opportunities are few and far between, but the reason why a properly structured uh, indexed universal life insurance policy can perform so well is that it allows you to accumulate your money totally tax-free. You can access that money tax-free and turn on income that you receive that does not show up on the front page of your 1040 tax return. And at the end of the day, when you die, anything left in there blossoms and transfers income tax-free. Nothing else does that in the Internal Revenue Code. So I'm assuming in this episode that you sort of understand uh, what IUL is, but a lot of times uh, people who set them up or uh, take them out with an advisor, they don't understand some of the options that may be offered by the insurance carrier. And when there are triggering events in the economy that may signal when to uh, switch your strategy. So basically, a lot of people understand, hey, if we have a, a, a recession or the economy is down, like happened from 2001 after the 9-11 terrorist attacks, we realized the economy went down for three years in a row. And so many uh, of our clients just said, you know what, uh, during this downturn in the market that's going to last a few years uh, while we're waiting for people to get confidence in the economy again and what have you and uh, start to travel and eat out at restaurants after that horrible terrorist attack. Uh, people just hunkered down and settled for the general account portfolio on their IUL policies. Back then, uh, netting them maybe 5% or earning 5 and netting 4 after the cost of insurance because that was better than uh, earning zero. You don't lose when the market goes down. That's the benefit of indexed universal life. But you may not make anything uh, because zero is the bottom. And so sometimes you just settle for the general account portfolio rate. But there's other times when anxiety uh, spells opportunity. And so I'm going to share with you three different strategies that you may want to consider uh, when you, we have a market downturn or a dive in the market. Now, as of the recording of this episode, we are a mid-year of the year 2022. I'm going to use some examples of when we've had downturns in the past. But uh, as I'm recording this video, the market has been very volatile. And so this is when you want to watch for opportunities. So let's say that uh, you have an IUL policy and you have um, an anniversary date coming up, or maybe you're just hanging out at the general account portfolio rate. Maybe you have money there that's being uh, dollar cost averaged uh, every month into it, which is a wise strategy when you're putting in a lump sum. And so let's say the market takes a dive. Now I'm talking about more than a three or 4% dive, unless that's in one single day. And that's signaling, uh-oh, we're headed for panic or sell-offs or what have you. So if the market continues to go down, and I would say, and when it starts diving 10, 15, 20%, what usually happens? Uh, the general public is really, really nervous. And unfortunately, a lot of people, when they see the market dive 25 and 30% or more, that's when they panic and say, enough already. 
and that's when they sell and they get out of the market <laughs> and they're selling uh, low. And then they wait, wait, wait until the market goes back up and they buy high, whereas institutional investors do the opposite. Well, you don't want to get emotions in involved in those decisions, buying and selling, trying to time the market. What you do when you own an IUL is you can sleep at night. You don't have to worry. And even if you just settled and waited, you're not going to lose if the market drops 20, 30 percent because zero will be your hero, right? But hello, that spells opportunity. So generally, when the stock market or let's say an index like the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, the Russell 2000, whatever, let's say the market drops 15, 20, 25 percent you may want to look at seriously considering doing a strategy starting from that month. Many companies may link on the 15th of the month or whatever, but watching that, many of our savvy advisors will tell their clients to link to a one-year point-to-point with no cap or a five-year strategy or allocate 40 or 50% of their cash value in their IUL policy to a two-year or a five-year strategy, or maybe even employ a, a multiplier. So let me cover those, those three different uh, options that many of our savvy advisors use with their clients, where they have helped them capture 25%, 61%, even 158% gains when the opportunity happened in March of 2020, for example. So in March of the year 2020, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic had just started and uh, there was a, a panic and the market dropped anywhere from 20, 25, 30%. And so my two sons who are advisors got hold of many of their clients uh, who had an anniversary date coming up or whatever they were doing. And they said, hey, uh, switch and link your return, maybe some, or all, now some of them chose to just allocate half of the money in their IUL policies to these strategies. Some did 100%. And so they, they uh, said, go to a one-year point-to-point with the insurance company with no cap. And so if you do that, that's normally not a strategy you would choose in a normal market because they're usually going to subtract like five percentage points or seven or eight percentage points. That's called a threshold. So if the market were to grow, you know, 12% and they subtracted five, you would only net seven. So it's normally not used in just normal markets. But in March of 2020, when they told their clients, hey, link to a one-year point-to-point with no cap, and uh, golly, the chance of the market being higher a year from today because it's dropped 30% is really good. It's, it's worth having a 5% charge to do that. Well, sure enough, one year later in March of 2021, uh, the market, the S&P was up 66.66% minus five percentage points. The net that was credited was 61.33%, okay? And so there were many clients. Uh, one had about $850,000 in his IUL policy. He didn't add a dime to that policy. One year later, he got credited 61.33%. And uh, that was 535000 or so. And so his account value is worth $1,382,000 uh, or thereabouts one year later. Now, that is one strategy when the market goes down that you may want to consider. That's called a one-year point-to-point with no cap, but they're going to subtract a threshold, okay? Uh, another strategy when the market is down is to say, hey, the chance that the market five years from today will be up dramatically uh, is really great. And if, if you don't really need to access the money, even though it is liquid for at least five years, if, if it's for retirement or whatever, uh, many times savvy advisors will tell their client, you know what, you might want to link 40% of your IUL policy, maybe 50% to, to a five-year. Uh, sometimes my son will tell uh, his clients, uh, take 40% and link it to a five-year uh, and uh, another 40% to a two-year and then the last 20% to a one-year, maybe a one-year point-to-point with no cap if the market is down. Well, with a five-year, you wait five years to measure the increase in the S&P from five years earlier, and the chance it's gonna be higher is really good, and there is no cap. 
So uh, that's a really popular strategy if you are looking at this for a longer term, like five years or longer. Uh, a two-year usually has a cap like 19%. And so uh, you are capped at 19, but you wait until two years to see what's going to happen. You may want to trigger that uh, during a downturn. But sometimes a multiplier makes sense if the issuing company offers a performance factor or a multiplier. Basically, how they work, and there's other episodes on this channel that explain these, uh, that's where you're willing to uh, allocate more of your uh, a cash value to uh, fund an options budget for the insurance company. Uh, you may understand that, let's say you have a million dollars of cash value in your IUL policy, and the general account portfolio rate is 4%. Well, 4% on a million would be 40,000. So normally you're saying to the insurance company, you can use that 4% general account portfolio interest on my million to buy uh, upside options if I choose the S&P or whatever. Uh, and then if the market crashes, those options expire worthless, but you still have your million. Uh, but they are able to give you a, a higher return, 8, 10, 12%, maybe up to a cap. Well, when you use a multiplier, then uh, you're allocating more of that million. You're saying, well, you know what? I don't want to lose 40% if the market crashes 40% like 2008, uh, but I'm willing to give up 7.5%. I'm willing for my million to drop down uh, you know, $75,000 to 925000 uh, And you can use an extra 75000 on top of the 40000 in this example for an options budget. Well, what will they do when the market goes up? They'll pay you 2.7 times whatever the market did. And this is why people who use the one-year point-to-point with no cap, they, they had 61.33% times 2.7. And we had clients that got credited 158% because when the market crashed in March of 2020, they employed the one-year point-to-point with no cap and the multiplier on top of it and they got credited 158%. It was unbelievable. Now, those opportunities are few and far between. Uh, sometimes you allocate maybe um, 5%. So out of a million, you allow them to use 50,000, that if the market crashed, you would go down to 950,000, but they will pay you about double whatever the, the S&P does if the market goes up. Those are called multipliers. Now, if this is intriguing you and you want to learn more, one of the messages here is you need an advisor who understands when these triggering events happen so that you can then, during your reviews, decide when you may seize an opportunity for a one-year point-to-point with no cap or maybe a, a, a five-year strategy or a two-year strategy or a multiplier. So this is one of the reasons why we have a coalition called IUL Insiders. But if you are intrigued with this, you can learn more about it in our most recent best-selling book called The Laser Fund. These are flying off of our warehouse shelves. And this is a 300-page book I want to gift you. You don't have to pay $20 for it on Amazon. I will gift you a copy, uh, but you have to have a little bit of skin in the game. If you go to laserfund, L-A-S-E-R fund.com or click on the link below, you contribute a nominal amount towards the shipping and handling. And I'll cover the rest of that and I will pay for the book and fire out a copy to you. There's options there to listen and learn and watch and learn if you would rather. And uh, check out some of the educational online webinars, and you can even chat with an IUL specialist that will help you understand how this may apply in your particular set of circumstances. So this is about you and your brighter future. I want you to get the most out of your IUL policy so that you will not be left in the dust and you can achieve its greatest potential based upon what's going on in the economy.